Hey everybody, welcome to The Beauty of Pastel. My name is Bethany and today I am going to answer a few questions that I've received via my live Zoom lessons that I host over on Patreon and here on YouTube. Thank you always for giving me your comments and questions. I love to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do so right now. I share lots of tips and tricks and full lessons, time lapses, a little bit of everything and I hope you're enjoying all the content. At my last live session, oh there's my little kitty, um, at my last live session I had a great question about what was one of the most aha moments of my pastel journey. Boo says hi. Okay, I had to kick Boo out and close the door. One of the most light bulb moments that I had as an artist was the very first time I think I really grasped the concept of value. Value is the relative lightness or darkness of a color. And whenever you understand and incorporate a good value map or value study, helping your elements of your landscape or your still life or your wildlife paintings, whenever you really start incorporating that into your work, really planning on the value structure of your piece, that to me was really when my artwork started to shift to a more professional level. One of the things that I really discovered in my value learning was using underpaintings, washes, and acrylic ink to help form a darker base for the lighter colors going on top. I also love to use toned paper, which I have some on my easel right now, and that really helps as well because you already have kind of a middle value color on your paper and you can darken and lighten it. So what I would suggest in learning and teaching yourself value is really to take pictures of your painting process as you're painting. Then what you can do is you can use the edit tools on your phone to turn those photos into black and white, which really helps you see the value structure of the current piece you're working on. Sometimes if I'm struggling with a piece and I take a quick snapshot of it during the painting process, turn it into black and white, I can instantly see areas that might need maybe a little bit of help. I also find that new beginners, especially in pastel, if they're struggling with a piece and they take a photo of their painting, then you can really tell that most values in the painting are mid values. There aren't really any high light values and there aren't really any dark contrasting values and that's really what makes an interesting composition because it's developing shapes on your paper. Now another question that I received was how do I stay motivated in my artwork and it's right here in my studio right now and that is a blank sheet of sanded paper ready to go on my easel. Now today I do not have time to paint. I've got so many things going on filming, editing, picking up kids from school, doing running errands that I haven't done all summer because of summer. But one thing that I really love to do is have a piece of paper waiting for me, beckoning me over to the easel for when I do have a short amount of time, I can quickly walk over there and start the process of creating. That to me is so important whenever you are wanting to learn, preparing yourself to be able to learn. It's like the concept of being kind to your future self. My future self is going to paint on that piece of paper and until I have a few moments, it's going to be waiting on me. I'm not procrastinating, I'm waiting for the right moment. And so that paper is also waiting for me. So in your home, in your studio, if you have one, even if you're sitting on the floor in your closet with a clipboard and a piece of paper taped to it, hey, we've all been there. You can prepare to paint the next piece by simply getting out a new sheet of paper, taping it to your support, having your supplies ready. I have all my supplies right there. And then whenever you do have a moment to spare or you have a fresh feeling of inspiration that rush of excitement about painting, then it's already waiting for you. So thank you so much for those two little short questions. These are my little snippets of art advice for you, or maybe let's call it the little things in life or the little things in art. I don't know what this would be called, but I just wanted to give you some encouragement today. I hope you have a great one. Put some blank paper on that easel or on a backer board for yourself. Make time to paint. You won't regret it. I'll see you soon.